Mr. President, thank you, uh, honorable uh, members, um, uh, for this very useful uh, discussion, very useful debate. I identified two families of issues from uh, your uh, statements. One, let's call it the, the quest for resilience, and the other one is what happens once we have the vaccine, how do we make sure that uh, we avoid the problems that we saw in the early stage uh, about distribution, access to a distribution of personal protective equipment. Let me start uh, on the uh, quest for resilience. There is no doubt whatsoever that Europe has to draw the lessons of these pandemics. I mean, it's evident, it's written on the wall. This is something that society will impose on all policy makings at all levels. As far as quest for resilience at the EU level is concerned, let me repeat what I said earlier. We have to bridge this asymmetry of expectations between what Europeans want from Europe in areas where Europe has nothing in terms of legal competence. This is a major issue. This contaminates public opinion projects Europe on a negative light, and I really hope that this will be, together with my colleagues, one of our main lines of action in the, in the months and years to come. Also on the quest for resilience, we have to make sure that the recovery initiative sheds lights and reinforces uh, a self-standing health program that is able to perform not only under regular, normal circumstances, but is also designed to face up to major sanitary crisis and pandemics. This is also a major challenge in front of us. Finally, many of you also raised the issues of production, back to the EU, pricing, uh, strategic autonomy, the place of Europe in the world, geopolitics. Uh, w when it comes to um, uh, pharmaceuticals uh, and, and uh, all these questions, I want to assure you that will be addressed in our pharmaceutical strategy communication, which we will be presenting to you together with Commissioner Kriakidis in, uh, later this year. Let me now come and finish to the other uh, cluster of issues of concern to you, which is what happens once we have the vaccine, how we make sure that access is fair, equitable, and this widespread distribution uh, is available to all Europeans and the rest of the world. I think we have, or there are three options for us, uh, three, uh, three uh, point strategy that, we will allow, that will allow us to act uh, uh, effectively uh, to the, this respect. First, we need to ensure immediate access to vaccine supplies. And for this, we do have instruments to be deployed. Namely, we can create an EU stockpile of uh, vaccines serving as an immediate response through the European Union civil protection mechanism. We can organize an EU joint procurement scheme, which will be secure purchase commitments uh, in a stable framework. And the Commission could also procure directly on behalf of member states uh, vaccines making use of the emergency support instrument. Second, this was about immediate access. Second, about secure production. For this, we are already in close contact with the industry and we are exploring together with them concrete measures such as public-private partnerships to increase manufacturing capacity or to advance purchase agreements to ensure production. And thirdly, delivery. In the beginning, we might need some prioritization. This is precisely the objective of the immunization strategy that I was uh, referring to in my opening statement. Such an immunization strategy could set priority strands for uh, certain segments of the population, but we will also need to ensure access worldwide, because as soon as the virus exists, no one is safe. And this is again precisely the purpose of our global leadership in the framework of the uh, pledging conference that should not end on the 23rd of May, 
when we have this critical mass of uh, financing uh, to uh, speed up the production of vaccines, but we will have also a role after the 23rd of May to make sure that the rest of the world, and especially these parts of the world that have much more vulnerable health systems like uh, Africa or uh, Latin America, will not be left out of these uh, developments. Thank you all. Thank you for this exchange. Thank you, Ms. Presta. Herzlichen Dank für